So point one would be understand your position from a seller's perspective. You know, where, where are your strengths um, that will give you some leverage to, to get your price across the line? <clears throat> Se- secondly, think about the irritants. Is there anything you've done as a supplier to irritate the buyer? And have they got any any rationale for leaving you anyway? Because you probably don't want to go in too hard if there are a number of other issues in the background that are causing the supplier some distress. So that might might weaken your your argument to a certain extent. So ideally, you want to be servicing the the buyer in the best way you can to make sure there are no irritants. But but be aware of those. You're listening to the Sales Today podcast, and I'm your host, Fred Copestake. On this podcast, we explore how sales professionals can develop a more modern approach to selling, the application of virtual and hybrid selling techniques, how to create meaningful business relationships, and much more. And welcome to this episode of the Sales Today podcast, where I'm delighted to be joined by Martin John. Martin is a procurement and personal effectiveness specialist. So Martin, welcome. Fred, thank you so much for having me on your show. I'm delighted to be here. Obviously, you and I have corresponded over LinkedIn in recent times, but great to see you face to face, almost face to face, almost face to face. The brain can't tell the difference anyway, <laughs> so it, it'll think we've it'll think we've actually met in person. <laughs> um, but no, we, we have corresponded about a very particular piece of content that you put out recently that I jumped all over because I you thought, did. "Whoa, this stuff is so important." You did. This I thought I'd so upset you for a minute. I must admit. No, I was thrilled. I, I was thrilled because this is the piece where you talked about to your procurement colleagues yeah. how to handle price increase requests. That's right. And that's I right. thought, so I mean, it's, it's something. I mean, like we're going to come on to. It, it's something that's important for both buyers and sellers, right? Well, that, that's what I thought. I thought, you know, I know you, and you're a specialist, and you're a trainer in this area you'll happily talk to either party to make the whole process work better. Yeah, At the end of the day, people absolutely. want the best possible outcome, don't they? So. Absolutely. And both parties are in the business of trying to protect their margin. So it's a time of quite a little bit of tension this time of the year or when there's a, an inflationary environment. Uh, but both parties need to try and get this price increase over, for sales over the line. And for buyers, you need to mitigate that increase as much as you can. Yeah, so we both immediately well, there's want a different natural... things out of this conversation. <laughs> um, but but what I thought would be great is if we could go through. You you put ten points, sort of yeah. 10, 10 guidelines, which you know that the buyer can yeah. can be aware from a buyer's of. perspective. Yeah, if we could look at those and kind of just think about well, why they're trying to do that, and then if we just have a little bit of a think around well, so what can the seller do to be in the best possible yeah. position to. To, to continue the conversation, you know, to, to, to deal with that, to deal with that response. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. As it was putting some context around the, around this. So this, this, this piece that I put out is more aimed. It's not aimed at kind of those part, those part partnerships that you have with a, with a customer, where it's a truly operates at a strategic level. This is, you know, and, and in those situations, you know, pricing would be something, you know, you'd be monitoring the input costs throughout the duration of the contract and you'd have, be having grown up mature discussions with your with your customer about you know whether you're you're under any kind of margin pain because of input pricing so that's not geared for that strategic level it's the level below so you're quite important to the to the customer but the customer has a number of other options perhaps okay, okay. They, they they could exercise their will to walk away so that's yeah, I, I, I love that massive assumption that people are having those grown-up conversations <laughs> in the more strategic we, we, we do have you would friend I mean, you would. Well, I would. I would because I talk about partnering and collaboration. Exactly. So I'd have to. <laughs> exactly. Um, but yeah, so this is the sort of the, the level slightly down. Um, reasonably important supplier. Yeah, we wanted to put our prices up. You don't really want to accept them. So, you know, there's, there's these 10 kind of uh, ten kind of tips, these 10 kind of yeah. things that you've identified. Yeah. And, and the first thing that you say, <laughs> probably unsurprisingly, is that as, you know, the buyer reject the increase <laughs> no, that's, that's right i mean it's uh, it's pretty harsh and pretty blunt and you wouldn't do this without firstly understanding the power dynamics at play and understanding whether you do have any options if there was a supply interruption for for example you know the buyer doesn't want to put their business under any d- additional risk but by the same token they don't want to roll over and accept a price increase that's presented them either so i think as a first port of call most buyers would simply say no, thank you. 
And that's yeah. really to test test the water. You know, how real is this need for the price increase from the supplier's perspective? Because if it is real, the supplier will come back. Um, and they might come back very soon at an escalated level if it's uh, a dire need to get this price increase over the line. But the first the first thing buyer would do is just say, sorry, no. Sorry, no. Yeah. So then as a salesperson, I mean, you've kind of, I think, given us the answer there. What yeah. we need to do is we need to escalate this and and start to explain why yeah i think that's the, the best? yeah the se- the second one would be for you know if you if if the if the seller does come back the buyer really does need to understand the why what are the drivers behind this this re- request you know because believe it or not fred some suppliers um might use this opportunity to jump on the inflation bandwagon and actually try and grow their margin in this situation and but not being faced with the actual inflationary pressures themselves they might say oh yeah we'll have a piece of that so some are not as um they don't play a straight bat uh, okay. like you would play for example oh, okay so so what we could be doing then as the seller is we're going to be positioning the price increase well, why not position it with some explanation early doors? And in that communication to you, you say, well, we need the price increase because this is where our ingredients yeah. are coming from. This is the raw material. Here are the impacts that we're having to deal with. And it's almost taking us straight into part two immediately. It, it, yeah, it, it is. And I, I think if you if you can be as open and transparent as possible, as your relationship w- will allow, it's, go- it's going to accelerate the acceptance hopefully of a, of your of your price increase because you're giving everything that the buyer needs to be able to prove prove to his or her own mind to be satisfied in his or her own mind that it's valid um and also if that then needs to be escalated up the chain you know internally from in the buyer's organization you know it's you, as a as a buyer you can't you can't go to finance or your manager and say well well there's a bit of pressure coming here from from Fred's Fred's company we need to take action and give them a price increase no you you'll need chapter and verse and if you can be as transparent as possible from from the start then that will that will help okay because then we come into part into the third the third tip or the third point yeah. you made which is to understand the impact on your price so yeah. okay you're 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 talking about the customer here the, the buyer yeah um so again a good salesperson should probably if it's relevant be talking about the cost in use yeah and saying well look yeah. you know, the price is going up but in the grand scheme of things it's only really going to have quite a small impact on you yeah uh, that that's right and suggest? the buyer will be asking so if you're saying look i've been hit with uh you know our energy cost of you know have gone up by 40 percent you know, you, you know, the buyer won't be accepting a, a 40% price rise from you across the board. They'll want to understand, okay, so what proportion of your sales price is made up of energy? You can apply a 40% increase to that, but that doesn't translate into a 40% increase in total price. So it's having that breakdown um, available to share with the buyer as soon as possible will be help, will be helpful, advantageous to you. The other thing that you're, or another thing that you're um, advising here, and I think I know why <laughs> you can explain, is that you're also saying that the buyer should be analysing historic trends. Yeah, <laughs> tell yeah, me you've why. You've got a wry smile on your face there. Well, you know that. So if if the if the good or service that you sell is kind of linked either directly or you know has some correlation with a you know a commodity index like paper pulp or, or oil or or energy uh, energy pricing then you know those those commodities go in cycles you know ups and downs and what i i think is a bit disingenuous if if a supplier was to come to me and say oh we'd like to talk about price now please we're at the top of the commodity cycle when there was no such discussion at the bottom of the commodity cycle, <laughs> you know they didn't. That's come, why I was smiling. <laughs> they didn't come rushing to me saying, "Mr. Bio, we'd like to give you some money because the commodity prices have dropped." Yeah. You know, that's that's the reason. So have a look at those what's what's happened in the in the past, and you know I, th- there'd be a rational argument to say, well, actually, in the past, uh, when the commodity cycle was down the bottom, we didn't have a discussion then. So I think you know, on average, the price doesn't need changing because you've benefited here. You're hurting here, so overall, net net, leave, uh, yeah. it evens out. 
so, so if the same not, with, currency, if, with currencies yeah, as well. Yeah. But if you're not ready for that, I mean, that, as you said, that is something that a good buyer is going to throw at you. And if you suddenly go, oh, but, 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 but it's like, you really not done your prep properly for this because it's yeah. such almost like an obvious thing to do. It, it, it is. It is. And it comes on to a, a tip late, later on. We talk about having a mechanism to deal with it. So we'll, we'll park that for now. But Okay. Because the next thing that you're saying is that, okay, I'm prepped for that. We've had a good discussion. You thought, okay, Fred, fair enough you're going to try and defer that's the next thing isn't it that would be the next thing you know if if the suppliers convince you that they need need an increase you know you're 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 running around your options are running out a little bit here now so what else can you do as a buyer to to um, mitigate the impact on maybe that budget year um you know can you defer it into the next in the next budget year and that is about that's basically just negotiation and goodwill um if the if the seller is really hemorrhaging margin then that's obviously going to be a really, really difficult discussion. And again, by demonstrating to the buyer that, you know, it really is your margin has been eroded to the point you're not making a margin anymore, then you need to press that issue to the buyer so that, you know, deferring is not an option. But deferring is something yeah, that a, a buyer will, will normally try and do, either to the end of a budget year or to as long as possible, basically. It's just kicking the can down the road, make the problem yeah. go away. And I guess this is why we go into the next part, which is why you're saying that, some people are going to be suffering at this stage and it's yeah. well okay that that's what i will do but if not well let's defer that and then you're saying but we can start to share the pain on that yeah so again we, the negotiation is starting yeah to progress, isn't again it? so there's there's variations on the theme here so firstly you try and defer and kick it kick it down the road secondly you could defer but also share Okay, so when you if you just defer, you're just deferring a discussion. So you the buyer might not even agree to the price increase. You know, at the point of the end of the deferral, defer and share is an agree, kind of agreement that you're going to sh- take some of that pain each at that point when the deferral period is over, and then that moves on to just share the pain where you both share the pain now. Okay, so the buyer accepts that you yeah you're having ch- uh, challenges with margin and we'll we'll happily not happily that's the wrong word we'll we'll accept at least some some pain you know to keep the the relationship on the right footing so on it all depends on the competitive environment of course you know if the if the supplier if sorry if the buyer has a raft of options on this particular product or service you know then they might not be so willing to uh to to share the pain and then the seller has to get a little bit more creative. Well, how you can convince the buyer to accept the price increase and also keep you on their books as a as a as a as a, as a supplier. Yeah. Okay. So it's almost like as we're going further down this this sort of list of options, it's it's like it's like the buyer, it's like procurement is working closer, and they are actually trying to. To, to be helpful if you like to, to the salesperson um uh, yeah and and no, no no buyer really wants to you know kick out a supplier that's performing well okay yeah. so it's, you know because there'll be risks and costs associated with that so as a seller i'd always have that in the back of my mind you know what you know what's the likelihood of us being kicked out here yeah. yeah and we've done a good job and we've proved that and i've come prepared and i've been having these discussions like grown-ups we were hope well and, and, and but i think also the tone i mean you not really mentioned the tone in the uh in, in the note in the in the, the graphic i'm looking at but it's from what i'm hearing you say that's implied that we are being sensible about this and we're using interpersonal skills to really try to get to the best possible outcome for us all yeah you know, we're, not, we're not looking be- to fight we're not looking no, to the best part you know there's there's no there's no ego here it's adult to adult conversation conversations trying to find trying to find the best solution so both both parties are trying to protect their their margin both parties don't want to necessarily walk away from the business don't want to incur more risks for their for their business so it's trying to find something that works for both so we get to the point where something is going to happen with 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 price most likely so now you're saying that we need to be establishing what that mechanism looks like. You know, how's that, how's that going to, to work? Yeah. So a price mechanism, like I alluded to earlier is if you can, if, if your, your product price or component of your product price 
follows an, an index, a published index of some sort. And I use the example of paper, pulp and oil because th those, are, those are quite common in the, certainly in the businesses I've worked in. And so what that, what that does is there'll be a component of the price then that will be mechanistically linked to that in that cost index. And therefore that takes all the emotion out of the discussion for that element of the price. So if paper pulp goes down by 40%, you know, next quarter, then the price adjustment automatically happens itself. And conversely, if it goes up, price adjustment automatically, automatically happens. But if you take out that massive thorny issue of price volatility from take that out of your discussions, that makes the relationship far easier to, to maintain and far more focused to kind of value value growth and problems problem solving between both parties. Uh, okay, so we're saying, right, th th this is uh, automatic, yeah. right? That's going to happen or not happen, whatever, you know, the, the rules we've set are. Yeah. Now let's get on with some of the good stuff that we can do in looking at, hey, you know, how we can co create, collaborate, Ex all, that, all that good stuff. Ex exactly, exactly. Because, you know, price volatility is a real irritant. It's um, unhelpful for both parties, frankly, because, you know, most people will want to work on the good, exciting, interesting stuff, you know, like yeah. in, innovation, risk management, you know, how the supply can help us with our uh, enviro environmental sustainability and governance goals, all that kind of stuff. Ah, okay. Um, environmental and governance. Okay, cool. Yeah. So... Is that the end of the the set of things that we need to be looking at, or are there other things that a um, a buyer might be doing? Yeah. So at the at the end of that, so it could be the, the buyer could have either either got a, a flat price, so no increase. It could have price price increase could have been deferred to an agreed time. It could have been shared, could have been shared and deferred, and you could have ended up um, got a price mechanism in place to. Um, handle future price volatility, uh, but at some point the, the, there will be an, an increase that's been agreed. Yeah. So, if I was a seller, shall I come on to what I think a seller should should do? And you, you know, you can mark. Please, my I mean, I don't, you, can, I don't, you can mark my homework here yeah, if you like. Well, I, I, I don't want you to to put your your membership of the procurement guild at, at, <laughs> at risk. <laughs> Are we struck off or blackballed? Yeah? Oh, don't speak to him. He doesn't <laughs> tell people too much. No, but no, it'd be, it'd be joking apart. It'd be really useful. So really this useful. is what. So before before anything, uh, I think a seller needs to really understand the the power dynamics. You know what what their position is. Does the buyer have any alternatives? If the buyer does have alternatives, it's helpful to understand how those alternative suppliers might be performing in in, in serving that buyer because there could be multiple sources going into the into the buyer. Right. So if you can get some intel on that. And there might be some some weaknesses from the um, from the other suppliers into the buyer that you can you can leverage, understand the power, and then think about how long would it take for the the buyer to remove it to to fire you from the from the business to remove your company from supplying to them. How long would it would it take, and how much would it cost? Because, like I said earlier, you know, if uh, particularly in, a, in the case of a good good performing supplier, buyers don't want to get rid of those over the sake of a couple of percent mm -hmm. typically right um because there'll be there'll be cost there'll be time and there'll be business risk in introducing a new supplier you know in the case of like a, a, you know, a packaging material you know you're manufacturing manufacturing a consumer good and then there'll be trials with the, the factory will have to undertake with the new supplier so there's a heap of time risk and cost for internal costs that the business has to has to stomach so Point one would be understand your position from a seller's perspective. You know where where are your strengths um, that will give you some leverage to to get your price across the line. <clears throat> Se secondly, think about the irritants. Is there anything you've done as a supplier to irritate the buyer, and have they got any any rationale for leaving you anyway? Because you probably don't want to go in too hard if there are a number of other issues in the background that the, are causing the supplier some distress. So that might might weaken your your argument to a certain extent. So ideally, you want to be servicing the the buyer in the best way you can to make sure there are no irritants. But but be aware of those. So just just on that then, um, going back to what you've just said, does the buyer have any alternatives? No, they don't. Right. So if I take advantage of that, mm. and again go back to the tone of this conversation, mm. get that wrong, that could become an irritant. And it though I might win. 
in the short term yeah. and get what I want because mm. I played that game. Mm. Actually, I've poked the beast so much that I'm going to go out and look for others because <laughs> I don't care if it costs a bit more or a bit more time or whatever. It, it's exactly. going to be worth it for us because it, you're it, difficult to work with. It, it, you've hit the nail on the head. That's one of my other points. If you yeah. force if you force a buyer into the into a corner and yeah. leave them leave them with no options then you, like you said fred you're risking poking the bear and i've seen firsthand how egos can come to the fore in these kind of discussions you know and someone doesn't want to you know it's who who blinks first and the buyer's not going to blink and they'll do whatever they can however long it takes to kick you out even if it doesn't make it it doesn't make rational sense anymore even if it doesn't make cost sense <laughs> anymore you know when egos come to the fore the, the, the it, it can be quite dangerous from a from a sales perspective because like a personal mission. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 oh God, it, it oh is. God. Because we start started off with a mature discussion, adult to adult. Yeah. And then if you if you start if it starts going kind of like parent to adult, or you know egos egos come to the fore, and it's all about banging your chest to get you to get what you want. Yeah, and then it can be problematic. Uh, okay. Sorry, I interrupted you there. So what what other things are we are we looking yeah, at um, with that? Create a sense. Create a sense of urgency. Okay. But and by opening opening your books and opening your books, let's talk about that because you might not be in a um, a situation with your customer where you have got open book costing, right? Uh, but I think without providing some transparency and when you're asking for price increase, you know that's that's going to harm you unless you give some degree of transparency that the buyer can see and understand for themselves. And if they can see and understand for themselves and you push this sense of urgency behind it, can demonstrate, look, this is happening to our cost inputs now. You can see that our input costs have gone up by 40% in the last six months. You know, that's the, the, the case for, for action. And you need to impress upon the buyer that, yeah, this has happened. We need to catch, catch up. This ha- needs to happen. Um, the price increase needs to happen now. If you were to to do that, to open your books and to, to create that level of transparency, which, which creates trust as well. Are those books going to stay open forever now? <laughs> Would you think? Yeah, that's, that's a risk unless you do it finance to finance, perhaps I've seen that yeah. done before where, uh-huh. uh, you know, and those, those numbers aren't disclosed with, with procurement, you know, that, that, that can <laughs> work. That can work. Obviously it's best, it's best if you can open up, fully to procurement but yeah you you've been in this game long enough fred to know that you know, that can come back to bite you later on or again depending on your mentality that could be a really solid thing that's used to kind of cement the relationship even further build even bigger trust yeah we're in this even closer together and actually that was kind of a blessing in disguise that we did that yeah because you know we we, we we're partnering closer. Yeah, I don't know. no, exactly. And and while you know it builds builds that sense of trust, which you can't can't quite measure and quantify necessarily, you could also. And one of my other tips for sellers is to use this as an opportunity to try and secure more value from the customer. So that could be a contract extension. It could be shorter payment terms. It could be access to you know senior management. It could be additional business. It could be a whole variety of things. So make making those um, making those conditional concessions. Okay, so it's it's kind of like we know that we're not necessarily going to get the full price increase that we've said. We're going to get some, but we will negotiate the fact that we'll open us up. I say I, I love the senior management one. You know, introduce us to some more, um, yeah. you know, the key key stakeholders and people who kind of got an overview on the longer term plans that yeah, exactly. we or can another, start to understand and work with yeah that, that could be a, yeah. a, a or even business. or even an intro- introduction to another business unit that you don't currently deal mm. with yeah 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 so so there are there are opportunities here as well um the other thing i would say was to you can use social proof as a way of um getting getting the increase across the line you know you know, this you're the you're the last of the industry to do this all the industry has, has, has accepted 10 percent. i'm sure that's a popular one it wouldn't necessarily sway sway me. You know, I don't care what everybody else has agreed to, but it might, <laughs> shows how good I am, doesn't it? <laughs> but it, but it, but it might it might do. And then, yeah. um, if you can provide options as well, then you know the buyer at least feels they got some sense of control over the over the situations. You know, you can do either option A or option B, what you prefer, kind of thing. Ah, okay. So you work out a number of options 
I think you probably don't want too many, do you? Because then that starts to get confusing. Yeah, maybe, maybe no, more than, no more than three. Okay. Yeah. But ones which you think, well, actually, I'm kind of happy either way around on that. Yeah. But I'll let, I'll let you choose the one which you can make work best for you. Yeah. As I say, it's, it's, it's back to that feeling, isn't it? It's the feeling of control. And I've not been completely railroaded into this thing happening. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Amazing how personal this stuff is, isn't it? No, it is. <laughs> and, you know, in negotiation, I, I, t- I teach, you know, you mustn't you know, leave personality and, and ego out, out of the room. Uh, but it, it can be hard to, to do that because it does sometimes feel like a, a personal, personal yeah. attack. Yeah. Because you, you, you'll be defending your, your your company's honor, your own honor, and all this kind of thing, and you know exactly, we, we are yeah, humans at the end of the day, aren't we? Yeah, exactly. We don't want <laughs> to see. To be. We don't. <laughs> we don't want to uh, appear to, into the organization that we've we failed. I mean, it could be career limiting, couldn't it? In some cases, or career ending. You know, if you come around at the wrong time, where we're in a really inflationary environment like we're in now. And and there will be some people in that position now, aren't there? Who might have just made their first. I don't know. First, first, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, promotion. So they're in a new role. And they're they're trying to impress, and suddenly all this stuff's coming yeah. on, and their their first set of actions are going to be, I'd have to accept a load of price increases. Yeah, oh, yeah. It's, you're, it's, you're not, it's not. It's not. No, it's not an ideal. <laughs> not an ideal envir- environment at all. You know, and still, many procurement functions are measured on you know the the very crude metric of cost reduction, and so that's not happening anytime anytime soon, really. Would it depend, and I might be trying to simplify things too much here, mm. when you look at the procurement function, would people at a lower level be more likely to be targeted on that sort of stuff, whereas the people who are higher up have that more strategic way of looking at stuff and can think around those kind of broader sets of options and, and get it why you're trying to do what you're doing? Yeah, you're, you're to- totally right. So at an operational level, that's when this the, the cost reduction targets really, really you know, make a make a make a difference between success and failure for that for that individual. Yeah. But even even at senior level, where you know cost reduction is one of a, a of an array of major strategic stuff, like you know you know how many how many innovations of the suppliers brought to us this this year? How are right. our suppliers performing on ES, ESG? Um, how many of our suppliers are doing co investments with us to to grow our capability and capacity in certain region? You know. But nevertheless, cost reduction is still an important engine of growth for, for some businesses because the savings used in some areas are then um, shifted to other areas of the business that are new or growing. So if there's a heap, load of, a heap load of new product development um, in one area of the business, you'll need some of the savings from other areas of business to fund that because that's going to be loss making for a number of years before it gets into a, a position where you can sell profitably. Okay, so again, a acute seller, and again, this is where I'm thinking about, you know, getting higher up the, the higher up the hierarchy. Who understands that can talk like that because they understand it. Can look at what those new areas are, and can say we can offer support in that. That's a yeah. different budget. That's a different thing that I can access, resource, and put into it. Totally. Totally. That's and then if you can demonstrate, big, you can, big tick in the box. <laughs> so yeah, if you can switch on the light in that se- senior person that, wow, Fred might be able to help us in this new area of the business over here. Okay, so we'll, we'll let them have their price increase there because this is really interesting and they could do some wonderful yeah. things for us over here. Because so. they've got a load of good resource, actually, that yeah. we want anyway, and we get them involved in that. We yeah. will get that stuff faster and cheaper. Yeah, yeah. and it's true, um, but it, that, that's absolutely true, though. It's absolutely true. So there's, there's, there's opportunity. So don't don't necessarily view this whole discussion as a as a threat an existential threat to your yeah. your existence the relationship you have with them i think it could be opportunities as well yeah but those opportunities come from an increased understanding of the customer what they're trying to achieve how they go about stuff stuff that's important to them and an ability to hold that conversation at that that almost that higher level yeah um yeah and 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 also, we'd be, we'd be talking about this. These suppliers that we be talking about um, aren't necessarily at that strategic level, sitting on the top table quite yet. Yeah. So, it, it, you know, if you can demonstrate you've got capability in a new area of business of the business, well, then that could elevate you to that top table and help with your price increase. But if you can't, then you might just have to keep yeah. on sitting where you are and dealing with the price yeah. increase the best you can. 
so, so, so the price increase could be a huge opportunity if you get it right. Yeah. It could it could be unlocking the doors because it might almost i don't want to use the word but almost like force the conversations that you were wanting to have anyway <laughs> but because we're now searching for a whole load of um more options you know you can't like, i've been trying to say this to you for ages <laughs> no, no, um, exactly it, right it, it's received you know yeah. it's, it's heard better exactly yeah. right and you could use you, you, you could use that you know you could tra- trade that you know okay I'll, I'll mitigate this this inflationary increase but i do need this to happen i do need access to that person yeah. or whatever yeah it's perfect yeah Wow, I, I suspect we could go on and on and on talking about this and some of the some of the nuances um, within that. Uh, and there are this is because because this is a broad approach, right? So yeah. it's going to be subtly different depending on supplier and market and all manner of all manner of things. So. Yeah, but um, oh no, re- really useful. Like, I mean, I wanted this as a punchy kind of thing for people to listen to and think. Okay, yeah, <laughs> the end of the world isn't nice. No, it's there not is nice. stuff that we yeah. can do and. Actually, it's even more positive than I thought it would be to be. <laughs> so no, no if, if you if you get it right and if you can do those things, which involves prep and it involves a lot of kind of self self management. Mm. Um, oh, that's 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 wonderful. Where can people? Where can people contact you? Where can they? Where, where can, can they find out more win? from you? Yeah, because you're, oh, okay. you're so, sharing a load of this sort of stuff on a regular basis. Yeah, so, so I uh, I post I post some stuff. I'm not very disciplined in terms of time of the week and time of day and all that kind of stuff when I post. But I post stuff on LinkedIn. Martin John on LinkedIn. Yeah. And then I have a website and that is www.martinjohn-training.com. And then cool. I have a YouTube channel as well, Martin John Training on YouTube. And I post some negotiation stuff on there pretty much. I'm very much in my infancy in posting videos, so bear with. But there's a couple, there's a few videos on there that you might find interesting. Yeah, no, no. We will. I can put these links into the um, into into the show notes so that people can can oh, can, uh, can can connect with you and uh, grow with you. Keep One, keep, 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 keep keep tabs wonderful. as you as you start doing more. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, I've really enjoyed the discussion. Really, no, me, me too. I hope we can very, have some more of these, Fred. Yeah, be, uh, I'm sure any we will. Thorny keep... issues, any thorny issues, let's get them on the table and thrash them out. Keep putting out the good content. I can <laughs> grab it and we could just start to thrash it out. You're dead right because it's 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 all about helping both parties. You're helping people think about how to do this stuff, how to do this stuff more effectively. Yeah. And there's there's such a um such a range of maturity, both I guess in sales and but I from speaking from what I know in procurement, you know, there's people coming in at the at the at the bottom and all all the time. And there's people that haven't been exposed to kind of um kind of what's the word? best practices because of the nature of the companies they worked in they could be small small or medium-sized companies which don't have a they don't have much procurement maturity in the business and so a lot of a lot of this stuff uh, can be new to a lot of people so i think it's i think it's helpful although we, you know we talk about doing the basics but doing them doing them well yeah uh, but i think they can be helpful yeah no brilliant thank you so much mate all right no it's a pleasure it's a pleasure to chat to you really good you've been listening to the sales today podcast with me your host fred copestake If you like what you've heard, why not subscribe so you know when the latest episodes become available? Take a look at my YouTube channel. All episodes are available there, along with extra material all about modern selling. Connect with me on LinkedIn, where I'll share more information around collaborative selling. All part of my mission around having good people doing good things in a good way.